morning, guys. Trozy Nashi Rail Services. This is James speaking. So I just wanted to go over uh, something that just happened recently. We had our, our first mud rail crossing, and uh, you know, for me, it did carry certain significance, uh, only because my grandfather it was actually his first job with George Braun himself uh, back in '57. So they had done a, a railroad crossing, and it was probably exactly like this, or very similar, if not anyways, installing mud rail. Um, so yeah, it was. It was a good experience, you know, it, it went flawlessly, other than um, we had some troubles with the U-Haul and the dump trailer rental, like, later on. Um, so, it, that was definitely a little bit of a learning curve, so to speak. Uh, so, what we're going to be doing now is, with investment from that project, we're going to be throwing in uh, a new transmission into our Ford F-350, and that should be enough to carry a dump trailer and even heavier loads, like maybe even some small equipment, some ties, materials, you know, we don't have to be driving around and screaming in the forerunner, like, you know, everything went, like, perfect with the rail crossing. There's nothing wrong with it, and there's no injuries, everything was, like, quick, quick. We had to extend uh, the north, east, section of mud rail and it was because I was originally just going to have it placed on two ties but because that second tie it was like disintegrated there's no way that we we're going to be holding any support with the spike you know against the base of the rail so I didn't want that to come loose you know in a couple of years and that piece of rail flop out and pose a hazard so um, what I ended up doing is extending it an extra tie just so that we could secure it properly with the spike you know it it did look a little bit funny, but, you know, at least it's done right, you know, it's not going to move. And that's the, that's the biggest thing, right? I don't want to take any shortcuts if I don't have to. So, anyways, we got the job. I think we had, a, like, an hour orientation, roughly. Um, we saw cut the asphalt. We plucked it out. We trimmed all the... Uh, the granular, the fine granular grade 5 stone out and notice that there was no filter fabric placed down beneath and usually you want to do that just to prevent uh, the fines from seeping into the into the roadbed and causing drainage issues so that's one thing that I noticed but we, we did place our, uh, our filter fabric down just to cover our asses while we did that and uh, threw in our base support plates, spiked those down we threw in our mud rail, we cut out for the joints, everything went nice and smooth. Um, but like I said before, it's the, the issue with the U-Haul. Now, what I'd done originally was I located a dump trailer, and the dump trailer was going to be, you know, the gravy to save in our backs. So, what we needed was a uh, U-Haul because our forerunner can't pull that. <laughs> it's a... Uh, the dump trailer, I think, weighs empty 2,200 pounds, and that's already pushing, like, you know, max of our, our capacity, right, um, for towing capacity. So, I'll, I'll tell the story first, and I'll, I'll get to the solution of what we end up having to do. So, anyways, uh, the dump trailer was located in, in Brantford, so we needed a U-Haul, so we had to rent from a local U-Haul to save on money for kilometers. So we went to go to get the U-Haul and we were going to get the truck and then the guy's like, sorry, like you can't take this. It needs to be back here by 4.30 because it's going out for seven days. So he's like, like you know, we can't we can't risk it. You know, you, you, you can't take it unless you're back here by 4.30 on the dot because I guess the client was going to be in there at 4.30 and they closed their shop at 5. So I'm like, okay, like, you know, if we have to, you know, we'll... We'll just use my trailer. Like we just have a little. Uh, I think max capacity is twenty five hundred pounds, and it's like a three hundred fifty pound trailer. Like it's it's light, it's small. Um, if anything, if like worst case scenario, we'll just load the asphalt into there, and then we'll just hand bomb and work like dogs just to get the job done. So you know, I'll see what I can do. He like, did some searching around, and, and he's like, oh, we got like a fifteen foot truck. Uh, it's at 22 Dundas Street, like it's just not too far away, so it's like maybe like eight, ten minutes or something like that. So uh, I'm like, all right, sweet. Well, you know, we got to go on. We got to get the job finished because 
you know, got to get it finished before the end of the day. This is Friday, too. We didn't want to leave it open for the weekend. So we hopped into the truck, and then we drove over to the other U-Haul, and we got the truck, no problem, signed it over. It's like one of those big kind of cube vans, but it's like the truck front, and apparently had a, a hitch on the back. So we, we drove down to, uh, I think it's uh, b and &E, uh, Equipment. So he's just uh, an independent as well. He rents out like uh, equipment and stuff like that. So went down to go see him and then he's in his driveway as I'm backing up and he's giving me this weird look. So then I get like maybe like five feet from the trailer. Then I get out and like shake his hand. Hey, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm doing pretty good, but uh, we might have a problem here. I'm like, oh no, don't tell me. So we look at the back there and uh, the ball is like a two inch ball or something like that and it's welded on. So there's no way that we could have uh, towed with that vehicle at all. So I was like, I'm so sorry, like I don't mean to waste your time, you know, and we have to get back and doing this other job. And so meanwhile, we had to take this U-Haul back and then we had to drive all the way from Brantford to Hamilton to uh, the Dufferin Asphalt place. Um, so Dufferin Construction, they do like hot mix, like hot ready mix uh, asphalt. So we we get down there and uh, we had some asphalt that we had reclaimed from the crossing before and we had it in the back there. And as soon as we get into, uh, into the office there, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, man. Like, we were supposed to get out of here, but like 30 minutes ago, if it wasn't for this last guy here, like he just called, like he called him before he came, like we'd be gone by now. Like, sorry, we're like, we can't, we can't take your business. And he was apologizing for it. And I was like, hey, listen, like, this is our first asphalt crossing, you know, we had some troubles with the U-Haul and with the dump trailers, so now we have to work like dogs, you know, shoveling the asphalt from the back of our trailer, our little dinky trailer. So, I, I'm, I'm sure that he, he pull, like, uh, pulls some sympathy. His name's Gord. He's a nice guy. And uh, he's like, well... All right, when I come, we'll get you weighed up, and uh, we'll get you, uh, we'll get you out of here. And then he's like, "Do you have anything in your trailer?" I'm like, "Yeah, well, we have like some cold ash balls, like maybe like maybe a ton or two. He's like, "Well, how do you guys plan on getting it out of here, like by hand?" So uh, at first, he told us to uh, go down the street because there's a place that accepts recycled ash fault because uh, they don't accept it there at the plant because they'd have to truck it out and, you know, just kind of uh, associated fees with that. Just makes more sense to get everything shipped over to uh, the place where they break it down. So, uh, you know, it's it's just funny how it all worked out. It, it worked out, you know, I'd say perfect enough to the point that, you know, we got the job done. You know, I believe that we did a good job. We did our best anyways. And, uh, it's like, all right, well, so you gotta go, you gotta go dump it out there. Like we can't take it here. And then he just kind of asked me again, like how much we had. And he's like, all right, well, uh, just drive up around the end, just drop it off and, and throw it in there. So uh, we <laughs> drove around, we, we just threw it off real quick. Like we worked really fast to get all that asphalt out there. And then we drove around to the scale, he figured out how much we had in there. And then we drove around again and they loaded us uh, with exactly how much we needed and uh, it worked out really well so <laughs> threw it on top of there and we placed our tarp down to kind of keep it hot and stuff and then uh we're on our ba way back and the tires on this thing they look like they're gonna like just pop like you know we just commer like we just passed the commercial safety you know according to uh according to our scale chart you know it wasn't overweight because i think it was like 0.9 of a ton or something like that. So around, it was just under 2,000 pounds and their trailer is 350. The trailer's axle can handle 2,500. So we're within our operating rate. But we got it back and the, like the truck's screaming because it's so heavy for it. So we uh, we get back there and our, our client was there and he's on the other side. I think he's taking over for uh, the production manager or at least he's uh, training for the position. Um, and I was like, oh man, like, I'm so sorry. Like I told him like the circumstances that had led to that and, you know, like we're, we're pushing it on time. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. He was, uh, 
but he waited for us and just so we can get back in the gate and finish the job so like really thankful that like just everything that happened that day you know happened for a reason and uh if anything it just kind of you know conditioned my brain for what's next to come i have a good feeling that there's going to be bigger business you know this was something that's like helping a, cl a client out but you know we're we're looking at the the construction jobs too and uh, whatever opportunities that are associated with that um, but you know we learned that you know we should have a, a truck that's going to be able to haul heavy capacity which we do but we have to fix a transmission and a jump trailer would really help us out because when we got that asphalt back like I tell you bye <laughs> like right away we went to putting the class 5 stone onto the uh, onto the filter fabric I brought some boards from Home Depot that fit nicely in between so that we could run the 20 inch packer on top of it pack it down and then we did a, a 2 inch layer of asphalt and then another 2 inch layer of asphalt and it brought it up to the, uh, the mud rail which uh, looked really good in the end but uh you know, yeah, like like I said, we uh, we work like dogs. <laughs> like we left uh, headquarters at 5:30 in the morning, and uh, we didn't get back until 9:30 at night. So we literally were. Uh, you know, it didn't take us long to do the asphalt. You know, had we had just had the proper equipment to go straight there and do it, or if we should have just done it in the first place, you know, it would have been saving us some time and money. You know, we would have been done because it took us from 7 to 1 or 12.30, 7 to 1 or 12.30 to complete the mud rail installation. That's just the railroad part. And that's the part that I'm very familiar with. But the asphalt part, this is my first time working with asphalt, so it was a bit of a learning curve. I watched, like, a lot of, like, YouTube videos to get myself prepared for it, you know, just so I didn't, you know, seem clueless when it came to it. But it's, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. So, anyways, we uh, put that in, we got it done, you know, uh, so orientation was probably about an hour long, so we lost an hour there, so we'll just go 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, it took us about maybe 4, 5 hours to get the mud rail in, but that's also with saw cutting the asphalt and plucking it out, and cleaning it, putting the filter fabric on, installing the mud rail. So that's that's not bad in my opinion, especially for two guys, right? Like it's, uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is you know cut down on the the man man costs just to have like our, our company there on site, you know, because you don't necessarily need um, the amount of people that you know they bid for. It's just the way how people capitalize on business. But at the same time, you know, you're presenting opportunities to other workers that may not have experience or as much experience, and they're learning and becoming more efficient from it, right? So. You know, it just all depends on how you how you work it, right, or the the way how you see it. But yeah, so we did that. Ash laying asphalt took us uh, three and a half hours because we got back around five, and then we worked till eight thirty. So three and a half hours to lay down the asphalt pack and do a good cleanup. We cleaned up all the flangeways too. You know, it's just uh, you know, it's mandatory anyways when you're doing maintenance. So. You know, we made it the job site look better than what we had came, and uh, you know I am a perfectionist, so you know that, that one part where we had to extend the the mud rail an extra tie, that kind of bugs me. <laughs> but uh, you know, maybe maybe in the future, maybe we can like I don't know. It would have been nice to know that the tie was defective, so we could have like swapped it out like right there and then. And then just done it like you know 100% correct, um, and it looked good, right? But this still works. It still does its purpose, right? So yeah. Anyways, it was a great job, and it, it really opened my eyes to uh, how much organization you need for something like that. Even just like a single day job, you know, we had to uh, find the materials for it. That was tough. We had to uh, arrange a day to go pick it up, cut it up into pieces that we need. And then load it onto the trailer, um, just for the, the the I guess the logistics part of it. You know, we procured and then we 
also uh, brought it over as well, right? So, yeah, that was that was interesting. But you know, I put together job briefings for it all, like job briefings, and even uh, JSAs like job safety analysis, and you know, it it turned out really good. You know, we we did our best, and you know, I feel great after. You know, and I'm just just really curious and excited to see what the future has in store for us like this is just our first year of operations so you know it's uh it's a good feeling well guys i hope you guys enjoyed your uh your labor day your labor day weekend i know that we enjoyed it pretty well there <laughs> i was uh i took a i was gonna take a, a a beer shower right or a shower beer but i was like just way too beat off after that day i just uh literally sat down in the bath and had a bath beer just because it's Epsom salts too and essential oils poured in there like it was so relaxing it's exactly what we needed <laughs> but yeah yeah it was a great learning experience and it was a great opportunity and you know hopefully hopefully people see our work and you know I really hope that people understand that you know, it was only done with, with two people, you know, and I feel like my, my other contractor would have charged out a boom truck, an operator, they would have uh, had about four to five people on the ground, uh, one probably being a supervisor slash foreman position. I called them field managers because that's what I was doing, I was managing in the field. Um, but yeah, they usually uh, stay inside, they don't they don't lift tools too much, and then they'd have uh, like three to four uh, laborers minimum, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see if I was to price the job out for that many men compared to you know just the two of us, just to see how much of a difference it would be, and uh, and take it from there. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and, you know, I hope that I can share some more valuable content with you guys, something that's going to help uh, teach you maybe a new trick or a technique or a procedure, you know, anything that I can do to make your day safer out there, because everyone needs to make it home at night. Alright, talk to you guys later.